Hello, I'm Paul Hooper of Extreme Networks, and I'm here today with Dai. Hi, Paul. I'm Dai Sawada. I'm Director of Product Management for the Data Center Stitching Products. Okay, Dai, great to be with you today. What do we got here? Explain to me what we're looking at here. So today we have a next generation data center top up switch, the 10 gigabit Ethernet switching platform, two of them. So we've got two, they're, they're, these are one RU I'm looking at, is that right? Yes, you have. You are seeing the two one rack unit switches on top of each other. And we've got, this is 10 gigabit box, so we've got 48 ports of 10 gig. What's the kind of density we've got on these guys? Yeah, let me explain a little bit about two boxes. So you're seeing the top boxes is the 48 port 10 gigabit Ethernet switching, all wire rate. Uh, you can have a copper cable, fiber cable, and everything you can you can support on SFB plus ports. On the lower one, you have a 48 port 10 gigabit Ethernet switching, same port density. However, it, the bottom one has expansion module slot in the back of the chassis that you can get four extra 40 gigabit Ethernet for the high speed uplink speed. So the advantage of the bottom one is I get the expansion module in the back, and of the top one, the advantage of the top one is I get improved latency. What does it look like? The top one actually have a better design in terms of the getting a lower latency by using a fireless design. So if you would like to get the lowest latency possible, the top one is the, is the switching solution for you. So we've given you the high density in one RU, and we've got low, la what's the latency number? Have you got any kind of measurements of the, the latency, latency number? number is approximately 700 microsecond or so. So you've got something that gives you very low latency with the density you need at the top of the rack, or we can give you the expandability with the second version. Yes. Okay, so let's, can we take a look at the back of these boxes? Let's see what we've got at the back. Okay, let's take a look at the back of the chassis. All right, and as a reminder, this top one is the fixed configuration, the low latency, and the bottom one is the, exp I guess this is the expansion module, is that right? That's correct. So what have we got in here? The back end on the bottom one, bottom switches, you are seeing the four port 40 GB Ethernet modules, which we call VIM4 40G4X, and has a four port of QSFP plus ports on it. So as a total port, you can get the 48 port in the front, as well as four port of the 40 GB Ethernet, and each 40 gigabit Ethernet ports can be configured as a 4 by 10 gigabit Ethernet port. So total port count will be 64 10 gigabit Ethernet port in just one rack unit. So let me understand and make sure I got that right. So in, in the top one, we have 48 ports of 10 gig at the front. In the bottom one, we have 48 ports of 10 gig. But we've also got this module here that allows you to do either 4 by 40 or 16 by 10, right? That's correct. Giving you 64 10 gigabit slots in one RU. That's correct. Wow, but very compelling. And, and what, walk me through what we've got here. It looks like we've got a couple of different versions of power supplies. Right. So these two 670 boxes can support the AC power supply or DC power supply, and you can have a dual hot swappable redundant configurations. As you can see, you can even mix and match the AC power supply and DC power supply, like you can see on the bottom switches, uh, bottom switch, and AC on, the, on this side and DC on this side. So if I'm running a data center where I've got DC fed from my, uh, my, my power conditioner and I've got a dirty AC supply, I can have this guy running half off clean and half off dirty, giving me that kind of flexibility and versatility. Right. So that's exactly the, the purpose of designing the mix and match configuration. Very compelling. And what, I've got three fans here with these arrows on. What is, what is this telling me? Yeah, for the cooling system, so we have an M plus one fan tray system. So you can have three fan modules built into the system and you can pop out one of each in case it fails. So even if you have one fan failure, the system doesn't degrade any of the performance. It will stay up and running. So I've got redundancy in the power, I've got redundancy in the fan, and I'm. this is running Exos, this is the same Absolutely. operating system? So I've got redundancy in the modularity of that operating system as well. And so walk me now, so we've been through the hardware, go up a level, talk to me about the layer two, the layer three scale of these boxes. Well, so this X670 box, our switch has a tremendous amount of scalability built in, starting with a layer two scalability of 128,000 MAC address boarding databases supported, and up to 16K IPv4 route supported. So it's a very, very compact design, highly scalable system that can support up to 128K virtual machines if you're running the virtualized data center. So if we, so great point. So we talk about the data center, if this, 
if we start thinking about the deployment in the data center, we've got the, the hardware resiliency, we've got the operating system with the scale built into it. Does these offer all of these kind of new features, the DCBX I hear being talked about, is it kind of, does it provide me those capabilities absolutely. as well? Yeah, absolutely. The 670, both of the model is full DCB compliant, so we can support PFC priority for control, as well as the enhanced mesh transmission selection, ETS, and the DCBX to support those parameters to be uh, propagated into the in the data center network. And so at Extreme, we're also very proud of our XNV technology and our direct attach technology, both supported on these platforms or? or? Sure, both of them are supported on the box. So we've got this, we've clearly got the software capability, we've clearly got the hardware capability, but these things, I think you can combine them together, you can stack them, is that right? Yeah, the stacking, we have been implementing a very unique and robust and fast stacking technology called Summit Stack. And for the Summit 670 switches, we support Summit Stack B, which is the Summit Stack running over the 10 gigabit Ethernet port, as well as Summit Stack V80 and Summit Stack V160. Those 80 and 160 number implies the speed of the stacking, uh, which is which are 80 gigabit per second and 160 gigabit per second. So, so I buy these boxes and I'm now given three options to stack them. I can stack them. I think what I heard you say is on the front panel, I can use 10 gigabit ports and get Summit Stack V, or I can use the, these connected, th these uh, plug-in modules at the back and get with Summit V80 and Summit V160. Give me a hundred, up to up to 160 gigabit stacking performance between these systems, is that right? Yeah, that's absolutely correct. So for the bottom one, Summit 670 V version, when you have a four port 40 gig Ethernet module, you can actually configure two of the four ports to be the Summit Stack V160 ports. So that will give you the speed of the 160 gig throughput for the stacking performance. So when, how many of these can I put in the stack? How many is it? You can have up to eight switches in the system. The total is 384 10 gig Ethernet connection in the single logically managed unit. And we can also, can I stack across the top of the racks as well with these guys? Yeah, absolutely. So the 40 gig Ethernet technology today can hit up to 100 meters, so you can go long distance stacking inside the data center, in the rack, or between the rack, or even across the rows. So that's the distance that we can support with the stacking to create the virtualized uh, stacked environment. So, so we're able to offer, if you've got eight racks of servers, you can put one of these Summit 670 Vs on the top of each one of those, and you can configure that as one complete virtual stack. It operates as one unit. That's absolutely true. All right, and so we've got the hardware, we've clearly got the software, we've clearly got the stacking. Anything else I need to know about these boxes? So the other things that uh, we optimize for these switches is the fact that to be, optimi uh, to be able to optimize uh, the hot air, hot aisle, and cold aisle in the data center, we made the switch in a way that you can reverse the airflow. So you can not only have the front to back cooling, which is optimized for the data center, but also you can do the back to front cooling in case you would like to flip the switch and get the ports close to the server ports. So I could, I could be looking, this could be my front panel on my rack if I wanted to, and it would then still comply with my hot and cold zone architecture. Absolutely. And there's one other thing that I heard about this. I've got to turn it around and see this, Diane. This was the, this thing called a motion sensor. Is this, those two little holes there, walk me through what that is. Yeah, this is the very unique feature set that we put together into the Summit 670 switches, both of them together. Uh, this has a motion sensor detection system built into the system, which will detect if there is any moving object in front of the switches. So that can be used for the security purposes. If you're locking and if you're making the data center very secured, you can detect the people moving around, and that will alert your SNMP manager, syslog servers, and you can uh, take an action based upon the situation happening in the data center. So the first switch in the industry that understands what's going on around it, not just electronically, but also physically what's going Absolutely. on Absolutely. And that compelling. motion sensor detection can be used to shut down the LED off so that you can save power and you can make it more secure by hiding that the switch is working in an active way. Well, thank you, Dai, for the time today. Thank you for designing really phenomenal products. Here we've got the Summit 670 family. As you heard, it comes in two variants the 670 and the 670V, these provide you with the density, the performance and the scale that you need at the top of the rack in your data centers. Whether you're looking to make them individual or whether you're looking to stack them all together, the Summit 670 is the box for you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.